Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man who's coming off a 27-second victory last weekend. Hoosier of Fight Club, Dominic Reyes. Dama, appreciate the time. Uh, obviously, you're always confident going into a fight, but did you ever envision, envision that fight ending in 27 seconds? Uh, I can't say I did. Um, I did, but not really. You know, It wasn't like a realistic thing that I was banking on, but I could have seen the fight ending pretty early with – it's something. And of course, obviously it all takes, takes us back to through that 27 seconds. I mean, kind of how, how did the fight play out for you? Um, did you see that, that opening being there in preparations for the fight? Um, the, from, uh, the fight started off pretty, pretty well. I felt like I was controlling every aspect of all the exchanges. Um, my footwork was on point. Um, I had good movement going and, uh, I, I did set it up. I, I kicked low to see how I'd react. And then uh, I seen his reaction and just fired. I, I, I seen it. So it was there and I went for it. Is it, uh, you know, obviously being undefeated and four of your five wins coming by finish, is this the, the most memorable victory for you? The, would you call this the best performance of your career so far? Um, I would say it's the most memorable victory I've ever had. I've never, you know, I've always dreamed of getting a head kick knockout like this where the guy's just starched. So that was like a dream come true. But, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, this is my most memorable and most, uh, yeah, the biggest fight of my career. But every fight's the biggest fight of my career. So, I mean, this one's definitely the most memorable. I don't know if it's my best performance, but I did everything right up to that point. So I guess so. And this was kind of, heading into this fight, it was kind of uh, that fight that, was to take you to that next level, you know, in, in terms of who's your fight club and, and obviously, you know, being a part of Lions in May and, and taking you to the next level. Did, did you put any additional pressure on yourself, um, you know, for this fight in comparison to your other uh, four professional fights? Um, honestly, I didn't. Um, I just went out there and was excited about the opportunity to compete. You know, um, we don't get to compete every week. We don't get to compete every month. Um, which is good, but you know, you practice so much and then you're just like, I just want to play the game already. And it didn't, doesn't matter, you know, what the environment is or where it's at. It's, it's a fight no matter what. And I get to step in the cage when it locks up and it's on, you know, that's what I live for right there. I know you had an opportunity to, to go out to Colorado and train at the, the Mar- Muscle Farm Gym, uh, you know, along with your, your training there in California. What what was the, the biggest takeaways you, you took from, you know, spending those two weeks there at Muscle Farm? Uh, just confidence. Confidence was the main thing I took away from that um, because I, would, I was training with the likes of Curtis Blades and uh, Neil Magny, uh, Gomes, you know, all high-level guys that – really pushed me and I was just right there with them. So, um, going with the bigger bodies and going with the, you know, highly skilled Neil Magny and and stuff like that. It really gave me a lot of confidence and, um, it kind of showed me that I was on the right path and, uh, yeah, I just took away like confidence and, you know, belief. Did the elevation at all get to you? It did. It did. The first, uh, couple days, it was tough, you know, I was, I was gasping, but I was still pushing it. But, you know, I felt like I was wearing cement shoes or something. It was pretty crazy. And one of the things that people may or may not know about you, you've come from, you know, football into MMA, you played there at Stony Brook, played safety, but fighting is pretty much becoming a family tradition here with your brother. And I know he's part of your coaching staff as well. He's a very successful uh, martial artist as well. Um, you know, how did the ultimate fighting become uh, what's become into a family business? <laughs> uh, well, it all started, you know, um, we all wrestled together when we were kids growing up wrestling. Um, and after high school, my brother, um, he didn't really have a lot of direction. So he still had his athleticism. So he started fighting. Um, he started training with Joe Stevenson. Um, and that, that went really well up until, uh, he had to, you know, go do his own thing is open, open up his own gym. Um, he's just, he's been grinding for a long time. And that has been like, I got out of college, you know, went out for the NFL. It didn't work out. So he was right there for me saying, hey, bro, you know, might as well give this a shot. So, and I like training. I always like training. 
because I would come home on my summer breaks and do cross train some MMA. And I liked it. So I started training seriously and I fell in love. And I'm still learning something new every day to this day. And I, I it's just a progression. It's a journey. And I, I, I just love competing so much, man. It's like once those once those lights just shine on you and your opponent, like that's what that's like everything for me. How much of, you know, everything you went through on the football field has really ultimately is, you know, there, there's not a, a bright light that's going to get to you. I mean, I've had a chance to talk to a lot of guys, and I, I think one of the common characteristics I seem to hear in terms of the skills you bring over is ultimately just in the preparations of, you know, breaking down your opponent because obviously in, in the football room you're, you're sitting there and you're trying to figure out every little thing about your opponent. Do you find yourself, is that ultimately maybe the biggest thing that you bring to MMA from football? That and my athleticism. Um, I'm bigger than guys, like taller than guys, but I'm more athletic than them. You know, and that doesn't happen often. Usually the taller guy isn't more athletic than the shorter guy. For me, I'm more athletic because of my D, my defensive back background. You know, I played DB in college, and DBs are some of the most some of the best athletes in the world. Um, and that breaking down film thing is is huge. Uh, guys don't really understand it. You know, they look look at film and be like, oh, yeah, that's that's cool. He does this or that. Me, I see every little freaking twitch that he does, and I could, I'm could i looking for ways to exploit, you know, everything. How much do you watch your own film? I watch it quite a bit. I watch myself quite a bit. I film my practices and everything to try to get, you know, I try to be as perfect as you can be. So, yeah, I, I do watch a lot of my own film. My opponents, I only watch a certain amount, and then we get what we need, and then we move on. We don't watch it again, but are you, I watch myself. Are you your biggest critic? I, I would say so, yes. Is it, and, is, it, is it ever one of those things that you maybe think you're, you at points maybe you're too hard on yourself and that you have to kind of make sure that you're not doing that to your own self? No, because um, I understand the balance. Um, I understand that, you know, it is a progression. It takes time to get where you want to be on certain things. And, you know, it's not going to be perfect every time, but we could work towards that. Um, I used to be hard, real hard on myself in college. Um, but now it's it's a little more relaxed. You know, it's my pace. It's my, you know, I'm watching myself. I'm not having a coach yell at me. So it's a little different. You know, they always talk about, you know, MMA, they, they talk about being an individual sport, but in reality, this is a team sport. I mean, yes, on fight night, you're in there, it's you and, and the guy you're facing, but, you know, outside of that, it is a team sport. Do you look at this as a team sport, or do you ultimately still look at it as, hey, this is, at the end of the day, it, it's about me and no one else? Yeah, um, I that's why I like it so much, because it is about me, and if I win, it's because I performed. If I lost, it's because I didn't perform. You know, I, I can't blame my coach or I can't blame whoever. Uh, oh, this guy missed the shot. This guy missed the catch. You know, this guy missed the touchdown. That was something in, in football that really, really bothered me because I had no control over what other people did. For this, I could control what I do at all times. You know, the sacrifices I'm making, the the training I'm putting in, the hours I'm putting in, that is all things I control that are going to lead towards my ultimate victory. So... I, I do see it kind of as a team sport because you do need your teammates. It's very important. You need your coaches as well. But nobody's going to work for you. So, I, in the, and you do, in the end of the day, it's just you and the other guy. So, yeah. You mentioned how competitive you are. And, you know, you are seen as, as one of the best prospects at 205 pounds out there. Is it is is your motivation, your competitiveness of, you know, I don't want to be one of the best I want to be the best. Yeah, that has a lot to do with it. Um, a lot of my motivation it comes from not getting a shot at the NFL. Them just kind of overlooking me and just saying, "Oh, he's from you know Stony Brook University," but like we're not even going to give him a chance. And that that's like something that drives me. Like I want to be known as one of the best athletes in the world, you know. And that's something that it's really. For somebody to tell you you're not enough and not even give you a chance, that that's something that really has fuel, it fueled me early in my career. And now I just want to be the best, period. <laughs> I don't see a reason for that not to happen in my mind. 
as we're talking, it's just a couple of days uh, since your victory. Have you already gotten back into the gym, or are you still taking a couple of days off just to kind of you know um, enjoy life? Yeah, I'm ta- I am taking a couple of days off um, just to enjoy life, like you said. My last camp was eight weeks, and it was you know six days a week, so that was a little wet, a little taxing on the body and the mind. So I believe this you know this little bit of time, a week or so, to get you know, just to kind of come back down and, you know, heal as well from the camp and everything. I, I feel like it's real important to, you know, live and actually enjoy life a little bit. Cause if, you know, all work and no play, you start to, you know, lose focus a little bit to be like, to be honest with you. So what do you do right now to, to go out and just uh, let loose and have fun? Um, well, no, nothing. Yeah. I mean, last night was Valentine's day. That was a lot of fun. Um, I took my, my lady friend out. That was a good time. Um, but other than that, it's just basically resting. <laughs> it's like my, my, uh, time away from the gym is actually going to sleep on, at a reasonable time and, you know, maybe watching a couple TV shows more than I would have before. But on the weekend, uh, you know, go have some drinks with a couple friends or something like that, that that's li- living You mentioned about television shows, uh, any, uh, any shows got your interest right now? I'm actually interested in Baskets. It's a FX show. It's about uh, Zach Galifianakis as a, as a clown. It's pretty funny. It's dry humor, but it's it's funny. I like it. So, you know, some guys will talk about video games. Are are you a video game guy? I do play video games, but I haven't played since I got in camp. So I gotta I get to get play a little more video games now too. That's pretty cool. But as soon as we get back into it, I mean, it's no time for that anymore. When you're in camp, how do you get your mind off the fight game? I don't. <laughs> I I obsess about it. It's just constantly on my mind, and I'm constantly, you know, thinking of ways to get better or what I did yesterday, what I could do better today, you know, because it's about me evolving and getting better during my camp and becoming the best I could be. So I, during my camp, I it's I just think about mainly just fighting. I mean, there might be a couple other things here and there, but it's just fighting mostly. Ideal uh, time frame to come back. What would be the ideal time of, you know, you, your management sit there and say, is it, you know, uh, three to four months from now? Is it Would that be ideal? Or are you looking to get a fight even sooner? Oh, possibly sooner, possibly April, mid-April. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. Keep Keep riding this wave. You know, we're early on here in 2017. It's only the uh, middle of February. Have you set any goals for yourself for this year and, and what you uh, want to accomplish as a fighter? As a fighter, my goal for this year is I would like to get into the UFC this year. That would be a big goal of mine. Um, other than that, I just keep winning fights. I mean, that's how you do it, though. So <laughs> That is how you do it. Uh Dominic, I really appreciate time. Where can people follow you at on, on the various social media platforms? Um, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, Dom Reyes 24, Twitter at Dom Reyes, and Facebook, just Facebook Dominic Reyes.